Good day, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the Samahang Pisika ng Pilipinas for their kind invitation for me to share with you some of the things that we do, we work on, especially uh, non-Gaussian, non-Markovian stochastic processes. And I will be talking about those processes in the presence of an absorbing boundary or those that satisfy a Dirichlet boundary condition. So let's start with the type of fluctuations or random motion that we are going to deal with. Suppose we parameterize our random motion or fluctuations in this manner. So here we have a fluctuation. And in particular, let me represent the fluctuations in terms of uh, an integral of uh, this object. We have three functions here. We have a modulating function g, a memory function f, and a window function h. And this g, f, and h are all modifying the white noise random variable. And then we'll be integrating them from some initial time 0 to some final time t. The fluctuating variable x could represent many things. It could represent the positions of a probe particle in a complex fluid. It could be the fluctuations in a geomagnetic fields. It could be the varying DNA distances in a genome. Or it could be the daily cases, fluctuating daily cases in uh, COVID-19. It could be the positions of a typhoon or the fluctuations in the rising atmospheric carbon dioxide level. So this is the type of um, uh, environment or framework that we're going to work with. Now, this framework has been applied uh, on several systems, like, like we, this has been applied to an aging fibrine. And here we specify the fun memory function f, time window h, and the modulating function g. So for aging fibrine, it would have this form, and uh, a time window of this form, and just one for the modulating function g and so on and so forth with the uh, studies on DNA. This would be our choice with just one and one for the functions H and G. And for the study and the diffusion of proteins, we have these forms of the uh, functions G, F, and H, and so on. So it has also been applied to for studies on cyclones. And uh, if you want to obtain fractional Brownian motion, which is a huge amount of application in the literature, then you just make the substitution for the memory function, for the time window h, and then uh, for the modulating function. But so uh, how do we proceed normally when we try to calculate the probability density function? So here we have parameterized uh, our initial point plus fluctuations in this manner. And to solve for the probability density function, we first observed that the way we have parameterized our fluctuation, the initial point is fixed. It's at x sub naught. But then, uh, since x sub naught plus fluctuations, the endpoint for these fluctuations at some final time, uh, capital T, for example, it could end anywhere. Okay, So we can have pictorially a, a configuration, configuration like this. So we start at some fixed point x naught at some initial time t sub naught and uh, it progresses in time so this will be our time axis this is the final time t and at some final time t the fluctuation could end somewhere here it could end somewhere here or it could end somewhere here but suppose we want to pin down the end point suppose we want the final point at some final time capital T to be somewhere around x sub 1. We can actually pin down the final point at some final time capital T. So to pin down the end point at some, let's choose x1 at some final time T capital T, we can use the Dirac delta function or if you have a fluctuating variable uh, inside the Dirac delta function, they call this the Donsker delta function. And so this xt, if you remember, is just given by your initial point plus fluctuation. 
and it should end at x1. Now this Dirac delta function, as we all know, is always zero. The delta function is always zero except when the initial point plus fluctuation would end at this x1, then uh, it spikes, it, the Dirac delta function lights up. Otherwise, outside of this situation, it's always equal to zero. So with the use of delta function to pin down the final point, you could have a configuration something like this. So, so at some final time t, uh, all the paths that would contribute to our story are those that would end at some final point x1, and all the other paths would be zero. And to get the probability that this would happen, to get the expectation value or the probability density function, we have to sum over all contributing paths. So, and that's what we're going to do. But in particular, let's uh, consider this situation. Suppose you have a, a fluctuation which starts at x0, and it could go anywhere. This would be the allowed region. But then if it hits a boundary, it is absorbed by this, by this boundary. And so it can never go into this forbidden region, which is uh, colored blue. In, in the slide. So we ask ourselves the question, what, what then would be the probability density function which would satisfy a stochastic process in the presence of an absorbing boundary or it satisfies a Dirichlet boundary condition? That means the probability den density function would vanish, it will be equal to zero once your final endpoint x1 is equal to xc, where xc is just the location of your boundary. Now, to solve this problem, we have to use the method of images to come up with a probability density function. So the, in the method of M images, so we still have our usual path on the allowed region, but then we allow, we put an image point, the image point located at some 2xc minus x0, which is actually just uh, equidistant the, it's equidistant for this x0 to xc and xc to this 2x of c minus x0, they're equal in distance. And we have this image point. So now we're talking about two paths. Uh, the original path in the allowed region, which we call xa, which is just your x0 plus fluctuation. And the path that originates from your image point. So um, uh, a path from image point plus your fluctuation. So now let's use the Dirac delta function to pin this um, initial point plus fluctuation, pin it down to some x1. Let's uh, say we want those two paths, the one from the image point and the one from the initial uh, x0, uh, both paths ending at x1. So we use a combination of two Dirac delta functions, and let's call that L uh, combination as some L. So we would now like to know the probability density function uh, given this combination of two Dirac delta function. So all you have to do, since uh, the delta functions are not almost, well, E0 most of the time, unless uh, they end at some x1. So, so we sum over all these possible paths. And summation is actually an integration. And in particular, we integrate over this L or this combination of two delta functions using a Gaussian white noise measure. You use a Gaussian white noise measure because inside this xa and in, inside this xb, as shown by, by, by this one, there's actually a Gaussian white noise variable. And you can only handle that if you do some integration using the Gaussian white noise variable. So OK, now to evaluate this uh, integral over d mu or the Gaussian white noise variable, our first step will be to express the delta function in terms of uh, its Fourier representation, something like this. So whatever is inside the delta function, we exponentiate it for the first delta function. And for the second delta function, we also exponentiate it. So let's now write down the exponentiated form in the next page. So here we have the exponentiated form. We still have the integral over the Gaussian white noise measure at the end. But then uh, we have the initial point plus fluctuation for the uh, allowed region. And in the second exponential, second integral, 
we have the image point plus your fluctuation. So, um, so nothing fancy at this point. We just uh, uh, wrote down the delta function in terms of their Fourier representation. Now, we can actually factor out a common uh, expression, exponential, this uh, g integral of f and h uh, 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 on the second line, and the g times integral of f and h. And we could put it out of the integral because uh, this is the only term which contains the Gaussian white noise variable. So we, we could actually carry out an integral over the Gaussian white noise variable. Um, the terms in the third equation in this line does not contain any omega. Or it does not contain any Gaussian white noise variable. So we could pull that out. And to evaluate this integral, we make use of the definition or the definition of the Gaussian white noise uh, measure, which is defined using a characteristic functional. And it's given like this. And the integral that we are concerned, it, concerned with is actually of this form. If you let k, g, f, and h be some psi, then the integral that we would like to perform is actually something like the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side is the result of the integration. It does not contain any omega anymore, but it's just an exponential integral of psi squared. So uh, in the next page, you will just see an exponential integral of psi squared where your psi is given by k, g, and f and h and we have to square that and that would be the result of the integral over d mu so now here we have the result of the integral over d mu this is psi squared uh, k squared g squared f and h squared uh, which is outside of this uh, uh, two exponentials now what we can do next in order to make things clearer is to multiply this exponential into the, the, the ones inside this curly bracket, okay? So if you do that, then we have two integrals, integration over this and integration over this, and uh, putting in the, the result of the DMU integration. This is the result of the DMU integration. We have now uh, placed it inside the curly bracket. And you can clearly see that the first integral is just uh, a Gaussian integral of exponential of k, k squared, dk. And we can use make use of this expression, which is available in the table of integrals. And the second integral is in the same situation, k, in exponential of k, k squared, dk. So quickly, you can make use of this integral, and everything would simplify. And in fact, the final result, because now there's, there's only the integral over dk left. The final result can be written in this form where this m in the exponential and this m in the coefficient is in terms of the functions g, f, and h. Now remember that we have not yet specified the specific form of g, f, and h. They are determined once you have studied a specific um, physical system. And so now uh, you observe that Suppose your x1, your final point at some final time t, hits the boundary at xc. So if you let x1 be equal to xc, this, then this will be xc minus x0, and this would be x1 will become xc. So this would, whole thing would also become xc minus x0. So these two exponentials would have the same form, and with the minus sign, uh, it becomes zero. So at x1 equal to xz, the whole probability density function becomes zero. So this is the right PDF, which would describe a non-Markovian Gaussian stochastic process in the, in the presence of an absorbing uh, boundary. And in fact, there are a huge amount of uh, possible values of, uh, values of the f and h. And uh, this is as a sample. I quickly go through this because in the coefficient, we have this Thing. So these are the possible choices which you could choose from when you're studying a specific physical system. So thank you very much for listening.